Whether the team is performing clean or unsightly, we'll cover it all here on Washington Football Nightly. I, of course, am your set man, Louis T. Thank you for joining me. Let's get to tonight's lead story. So I'm dressed in all black like the omen, like I was yesterday. So that means we took one smack dab on the chin as Washington fell to one and two on the season with their 34 to 20 loss at Cleveland in what was a very winnable game. As a matter of fact, Washington took a 20 to 17 lead heading in to the fourth quarter before things imploded and the Browns scored 17 unanswered points to finish out the game. So five turnovers for Washington in the game, four coming off of Dwayne Haskins. One, you charge it to his account, but Jaron Christian was beat off the edge. Dwayne never had a chance on that particular snap. But the other three, the the interceptions, those were the big story uh, in the game. Now, Dwayne did not lose this game on his own, okay? Uh, the defense had a huge part in this as well. And, and I will say the defense played well enough to win in this game. Let me reiterate that before I make this statement that I'm making. But... Um, they did not step up in those sudden change of possession situations. And I watched every game that has been played in week number three. And a lot of teams had turnovers. Turnovers that set the other team's offense up and put their defense in bad positions. I give you a great example. The Falcons were playing the Bears. The Bears are one of the better defenses in all of football to this point. Uh, the Their quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky, throws an interception. They ended up benching him after that interception, but he throws an interception. It's returned to the uh, Bears' 20-yard line, first and 10 for Atlanta at the Bears' 20-yard line, okay? They're down in the game 23-10 to 10 are the Bears at that time. They could have given up a touchdown, and if they had, they would have lost that game ultimately. Instead, the defense gave up one yard, and force Atlanta to settle for a field goal. Atlanta would not score another point the remainder of the game. That's what you have to do sometimes when your defense uh, is put into a position like that. When your offense turns it over, <clears throat> puts you in a tough spot, you have to respond. Not every time are you going to be able to do that. But sometimes you need to be able to do that. The Chargers might be the best defense in football. They've got elite players at every single level. They gave up the football multiple times. As a matter of fact, three turnovers in the first half. You know how many points they gave up off of those three turnovers? Granted, they were playing the Carolina Panthers. Nine points. And two of those three turnovers ended up having the football land deep in Chargers territory. Panthers were only able to muster three field goals off of those sudden change of possessions. <clears throat> I said all of that to say this. For as bad as Dwayne was, the defense still had a chance. These weren't pick sixes. These weren't scooping scores. The defense still had a chance to go out and get stops. They didn't, okay? They had a chance to stop Bradley Chubb from cutting back against the grain and running for a 16-yard touchdown, but they didn't stop him from doing that. They had opportunities to get off the field in third-down situations, and they didn't. When Dwayne took this team down the field for a second consecutive touchdown in the third quarter to give the team a 20-17 to 17 lead, they had a chance to come out, get a stop, and get the football back to a hot offense that had scored on two straight possessions. But they didn't. They allowed the Browns to run it down their throats, allow Baker Mayfield to pretty much be a passenger, and allowed the Browns to take a lead that they would never relinquish in the football game. So while Dwayne was not good yesterday, and he was the chief reason for the loss yesterday, the defense had opportunities, and they were banged up. Granted, if Chase Young's out there, I think this is a different ball game. If Matt Ioannidis is out there, I think this is a different ball game defensively. But they weren't. They still had a chance to step up and make plays, and they didn't. So for all of the talk of Dwayne, and it is all justified, the defense had their share in this loss as well, okay? Four, 34 points were given up. Not a single one of them was given up due to an offensive play that directly landed Cleveland in the end zone. Not a single one of these plays was on special teams in which they ended up in the end zone, all right? Every single one of these touchdowns had a chance to be prevented by the defense, and they didn't. 
So, again, before you just go and crucify Dwayne and put all of this on his shoulders, the defense had a chance to have a say-so in the outcome of this game, and they failed us in this game as well. But again, more of the blame goes to Dwayne because without those turnovers, Cleveland doesn't have great field position. Without those turnovers, Cleveland doesn't even have momentum in this game, especially at the beginning when Washington had all the momentum. We're up 7-3, and we're driving for more points, and Dwayne makes that pass that call Joseph picks off and really started the avalanche of points from Cleveland. So, uh, yes, Dwayne Haskins is going to be the talk of this game, and rightfully so. He was not good. He is in a position now where you start to question whether this guy is the right man for the job or not. And uh, Ron Rivera, I think, is starting to question that as well. Now, he, I, I feel like he does. And, and he's, he made a statement last night that pretty much said, Dwayne's our guy. There's nothing to talk about. There's nothing to consider. We need to find out if this guy is uh, the guy or not. And the only way to do that is to play him. He's still learning. He's still essentially a rookie. He hasn't played a full 16-game slate. We're still looking and evaluating at Dwayne Haskins and trying to figure out if he's the right man for the job or not. Those are all the right things to say. Ron is absolutely 110% spot on, and that's what he's supposed to say. But after having a chance to look at the film, he saw a lot of things that I think he did not like, and he saw a bit of regression. And we talked about a bit of regression from Dwayne. All right, at the end of last season, we saw a guy that was very confident, that had figured out some things, the game had slowed down for him, and that's what got us excited coming into 2020. We have, not, we have yet to have seen that guy yet for a full ball game. We saw it in a full game last year against Carolina. We saw it in a full game last year against the, uh, the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. We saw it for a half last year against the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, uh, or excuse me, the New York Giants. We saw this guy play at a, a high enough level that is sustainable enough to win you double-digit games at the end of last season. We have yet to see that guy this season, which means it feels like he's taking a step back. We expected a bit of regression because it's a brand new offense, no offseason, and a lot of different things that have affected this football team from a you know, young, inexperienced standpoint. There are a lot of things that you expected to have this offense start off a little slow. But there are things that are avoidable. And these are the things that I've talked about. A lot of you seem to be missing the point with Dwayne. And I'm, I'm speaking to those of you who are Dwayne supporters right now. Because, again, if, you, if the person that you're trying to get through to is a non-Dwayne supporter, or they don't believe in Dwayne, you're wasting your breath. You know, everything that they're seeing is confirmation that he's not the guy and there's nothing you can say to them to change their mind. So you need not waste your breath. Save it. You could probably use it better else. You could probably use it somewhere else in a much better capacity than wasting it trying to explain to someone who doesn't believe in Dwayne. However, for those of you who are Dwayne believers and staunch believers in his talents, and, and there are reasons that you should be, you got to stop making excuses for him that rely on, oh, the offensive line is terrible. We didn't hear as much of that this week as we did last week. And I tried to convince you guys due to the film that the offensive line, and even Ron Rivera came out and said, the offensive line was not as bad as you guys think. You know, Troy Apke was not as bad as you guys think. Could they be better? Absolutely. I said the same thing. But they weren't as bad as you guys like to make them out to be. When you look at the offensive line in this game, they were pretty damn good. Outside of that one situation where uh, Jaron Christian got beaten, yeah, Dwayne took, a, I think, another sack uh, start, starting the third quarter. I think he got sacked by, um, by uh, Sheldon Richardson. Uh, but that was a coverage sack. He had time on that play. Not like that was immediate pressure and guys got beat right off the snap. He had time all day in this game to make accurate throws, to make smart decisions with the football. Uh, he didn't have to make some of the mistakes that he made in this game due to the offensive line having him speed up his process. So that excuse is out the window for this particular game. Now, then the next thing I heard, and I heard a ton of that this week, is, oh, the, the playbook and, and the play calling and Scott Turner. And he had, Scott Turner's play calling had absolutely zero to do with Dwayne Haskins' struggles in this game, okay? There were situations that were avoidable, there were throws that were made. There were decisions that were made um, that had nothing to do with the play calling. 
This was all in the quarterback. There were throws that were missed that had nothing to do with the play calling. Guys were open. Terry McLaurin is open in the end zone. Can't miss that. Can't miss it. So I, I don't want to hear about the playbook. I don't want to hear about that it's a new offense and he needs time to learn. Th- those things have nothing to do with the inaccuracies. Ron Rivera talked about there's still some things from a technical standpoint with footwork and mechanics that he needs to clean up. That has nothing to do with a new playbook. You guys have to come off of some of these excuses. At the end of the day, he has to be better. Period. There's no other way to sugarcoat this. No other way to dress this up. He can't perform the way that he did in week number three if we're going to have a chance to win games. He can't do that. And I told you, the thing that I was clinging to, because you know I could deflect all of the Dwayne haters, left and right, if he's going out and having a quote-unquote Alex Smith game, stat-wise, you know, 18 of 31, 192 yards, one touchdown, no interception, and we lose 24 to 20, or we win 17 to 14, I can, I can explain a lot of that. That's when you start using the excuses of it's a new offense. Things are going to go a lot slower. He's still trying to acclimate himself to the play calling. That's when that's in play. Okay? Not when you throw three interceptions and you're staring down receivers and you're overthrowing guys and you're taking defenders straight to the ball. That has nothing to do with play calling. So you have to stop. You have to know when this excuse is viable and when it's not. In the whole playbook, and you guys have to understand now, if you want to say he doesn't have a ton of experience, that's the right excuse for a performance like this. Not that he's in a new offense. Not that it's a new playbook or it's new terminology. That's what happens when you're spending a time out in a game and you're not getting everybody quite huddled up fast enough. That's when you blame the playbook. When he goes 18 of 31 like he did against Philadelphia, no touch, no, no interceptions, one touchdown. That's when you say, hey, slow to pick up the playbook. You know, we're, we're, we're gradually working our way into this thing. He's getting his feet wet. He's getting comfortable. He'll be fine. That's when that's a viable excuse. But when you go out and you throw three interceptions and you essentially gift wrap the game for the opponent due to staring down your receivers and then delivering the football when the defender gets there to pick it off, that's on you. That's not on the play caller. That's not on the new offense. That's on you. Now, I will tell you, I watched every game around the National Football League in week three, and Dwayne Haskins is not the only young quarterback staring down receivers and paying for it. I think it's just an, a, a, an experience thing. I watched Kyler Murray, who also had a three interception game. Okay. Now, he also had uh, he also was Offensive Rookie of the Year last year. So when you say, well, Kyler Murray threw three picks, a lot of you like to do that. Well, Kyler Murray threw three picks. Nobody wants to bench him. That's because Kyler Murray was the Offensive Rookie of the Year last year. Okay, that's because Kyler Murray is entrenched as the starter. We know he can get it done at a high level. People were talking about Kyler Murray this year. Not me, but some people were talking about Kyler Murray as an MVP candidate. And after the first two weeks of the season, that those voices got louder. I'm glad they started to quiet down after his three interception performance versus Detroit on uh, Sunday. But I digress. He made the same mistake. He, he eyeballed his receiver right off the line of scrimmage. The linebackers saw where his eyes were taking him, and he threw the football to uh, DeAndre Hopkins in, in the, or Larry Fitzgerald, and the linebacker stepped right in front of him, picked it off. I saw a, a similar uh, occurrence in another game with another young quarterback, Daniel Jones. Ever heard of him? Yeah, he's a turnover machine too. I watched him stare down his tight end, take the linebacker right to the football, and it got picked off. Okay? I watched, and this was everybody's darling uh, last week, you know, and and I even brought him up too. I'm I'm guilty because, you know, you see a guy first start, he's thrusted into the spotlight, unbeknownst to him. He thought he was going to be backing up. And right before game time, he finds out he's got a start in Justin Herbert. And he had a a really good performance last week. Well, he knew he was starting this week. And he wasn't all that great this week. Had a bunch of turnovers. Four of them, to be exact. And one of them was him staring down his receiver, taking the corner right to the football, and he steps right in front of the offering and returns it deep into Chargers territory. So, 
You see these young quarterbacks making mistakes that young quarterbacks make, and Dwayne was guilty of that. And so, you know, the the interceptions I have, the interception I had a problem with when I actually went back and watched wasn't the ones where he stared down his receiver. Those can be corrected, okay? Guys stare down receivers all the time. You can adjust. You will learn that. Hey, I gotta look this guy up. The one I had a problem with was the last one. Where are you going with the football? What are you looking at? Those are the ones you can't explain. I can explain him staring down a guy. Lack of experience. You know, trying to make something happen. Those things happen with young quarterbacks. They learn that, hey, you just check it down, man. Live to fight another day. But you need that experience because you still think you're in college. He still thinks he's at Ohio State and that he's about to go out and shred Northwestern and, and about to put up 62 points. And that he can stare at a guy, but because his guy is better, he's going to be able to will him open with a good throw. This is not Ohio State. You're not playing against Purdue, okay? Now you're in the big leagues. Everybody's athletically gifted, and everybody's watching your eyes. And if you take them straight to the prize, they're going to pick you off. So you got to learn that. So it's a process. So from that standpoint, I understand that. The things that have frustrated me are the misses. Those are the things I can't get past because that's not, that has nothing to do with the lack of experience or, you know, a new playbook or any of that stuff. You know, the, the, the mechanics may get better. It may not get better. You know, that, that all comes with repetition. You need muscle memory for that. So I, I, don't, I don't worry about the mechanics as much as the inaccuracies. When you've got time and he had time to step up in the pocket and these weren't flat footed throws. This wasn't the knee locking up and him throwing with all arm. He stepped into these throws and he just missed. Now, I watched, again, I watched all the games and I watched plenty of quarterbacks just miss. And I said, wow, you know, it's amazing because we assume that most of these quarterbacks are out here hitting these passes, but they miss too. Now, the elite ones generally don't. They get a guy running wide ass open. They generally don't miss. But that's not what Dwayne is. And that's what, not what a lot of these young quarterbacks are. So you got to take the good with the bad. I, I'm here to tell you that, and I told you the same thing yesterday, I'm not giving up on Dwayne. And I, I, I'm glad that he's going to continue to play. But as we, die, as we go on to the next uh, topic, and let's move on to the next segment in other news, uh, Ron Rivera stepped up to the podium today, and he had some really interesting things to say. I think this was one of his most profound and impactful pressers to date I'm going to play you a soundbite from his presser from today and what he had to say uh, here in a second. But before we get to that, I just want to clean up a couple of injury notes from yesterday's game. Chase Young right now is being evaluated. He's uh, getting an MRI on his groin. We'll find out more about him later on in the week. I'm assuming we'll find out more about him on Wednesday when they first come back to practice and Rivera has another presser. I think that's when we'll find out the extent of this injury. Now, Josina Anderson was already tweeting about him seeing uh, a specialist and having an MRI done. So if I had to guess, Josina will find out the scoop before we get it from Ron. So we'll probably know at some point tonight or maybe even into tomorrow uh, the status of a Chase Young moving forward and how long he'll be out for with this groin injury. Don't expect him to play in week four, though. I wouldn't expect him to play the next two weeks, to be honest with you. I think the earliest we see Chase Young on a football field donning the 99 for the Burgundy and Gold is week six versus the New York Giants. And that can't get here soon enough because I think that's the next time we'll probably be able to get ourselves a win. But that's nor here nor there. Um, uh, the, the, the bigger issue right now is Matt Ioannidis, um, our best pass rushing defensive tackle. Uh, the fear is that we've lost him for the entire season um, I, I, another uh, defensive tackle in the league, Jarrell Casey for the Denver Broncos, suffered the exact same injury, a torn pectoral muscle, and he's feared to be lost for the season. Right now, the Broncos um, are weighing their options as to whether to put him on IR for the entire year or to hold out hope that this guy can come back at the end of the season. They're not going to be playing for anything meaningful, so more likely than not, Jarrell Casey's done for the season. I think the same thing's going to happen to us with Matt Ioannidis. I think he is done for the season, and that's unfortunate because he's been relatively healthy throughout his career. He's had some nicks and bruises, and I remember he even had a, a broken hand, and he wrapped it up, and he played through it, but nothing serious like this, significant like this, to where he's missed extensive time. Uh, but our best interior defensive rusher maybe lost for the season, 
and Matt Ioannidis, and that's a diff- that is a devastating blow to this defense. If, if we want to lead the league in sacks, and, and I was very profound in making that statement, I also said that we needed to remain healthy. And you're taking a guy that is good for eight and a half to 10 sacks on the season away from this defense. And so that's a deafening blow to this football team as Matt Ioannidis, more likely than not, is done for the year with a torn pec muscle. So uh, some good news uh, to leave the injury front on a good note. Uh, Dontrell Inman, who I swore had broke his hand. I just, I was positive. He couldn't move it. They walked him off the field like they were holding fine china. And um, I, I thought his hand was broken. Turns out that the uh, x-rays came back negative. His hand does not have any kind of fracture in it. So now it's all about the soreness and the swelling and just how fast he's able to heal to be able to get back on the field. That's a great, that's great news because I, I thought Dontrell Emmon was going to be out for at least the next six to eight weeks with a broken hand. And... Um, Obviously, he's a receiver. Can't work without his hands. This isn't a defensive lineman that could just put a cast on it and keep it pushing. Um, he's an offensive guy, a, a receiver specifically. Needs his hands. That's his working tools. So um, he's still going to miss some time, I think, which he was arguably the biggest guy in the game yesterday with two touchdown grabs. Uh, we can't really afford to lose anybody at the skill positions. Terry's... Um, the only guy that we have really that is an explosive dynamic player, Steven Sims is the other guy, but he was banged up and barely played yesterday. I thought the youngins stepped in and, and they were admirable, especially um, Isaiah Wright, who had a really strong game for his first NFL, real first NFL action. I thought he did some really good things, man. But um, Dontrell Emmon is going to be missed if he is out for a considerable amount of time, but it could have been worse. His hand could have been broken. It's not. That's good news. So let's talk about Ron Rivera's presser today because he had a lot of interesting things to say. Um, I'll start by talking about his um, mentions of the rookies and how well these young guys have played this year. And he went down the list. Uh, This was a question asked by Rhiannon Walker of The Athletic, and she pretty much was asking him about some of the young guys that stepped up in week three, like a Cameron Curl um, and, you know, and Montez Sweat, even though he's not a rookie. She just was talking about young players in particular, Isaiah Wright, and all these guys that had stepped up and played a pivotal role in, in, in this team being competitive early in the season. And so Ron pretty much went down the line talking about each and every single one of these guys you know, he talked about, you know, how he's, he was disappointed that Chase got injured because w- what with what Montez did in this game, if Chase is on the other side, that's why I told you, I think the outcome of this game is vastly different with what uh, Chase, with, with, uh, what, with what Montez was doing on one side, if Chase is on the other side, I really like to think that they would have been in some trouble in this football game. And they definitely wouldn't have been running the football as effectively with Chase out there because he's an animal in the run game as well as the pass. So, um, and, and the film has shown that. And I've showed you guys that on film about how well Chase plays the run. So uh, I really feel like they took advantage of Kerrigan and Ryan Anderson and those guys being out on the field consistently. And so he said, you know, Chase has been as advertised to this point. And then, you know, he, he started talking about how... Cameron Curl has overachieved. And he said, look, if Cameron Curl had been able to go through a normal procedure in, in, in the, the, the process leading up to the draft, if he would have had personal workouts for teams, those private workouts where each team gets 30 of them, he would have, he would have probably been drafted a lot higher than the seventh round. And, and Ron was like, we were fortunate to get this guy where we did because uh, he's been absolutely fantastic for us. And he's he really... Uh, overachieved in what we were expecting from a seventh round pick. Uh, He talked about Keith Ishmael being ready. You know, this is a guy that is a premier backup for us now. With all the injuries uh, on the offensive line, he's got to step in now. And if anybody gets hurt on the interior with Sheriff already going down, the next guy up is Keith Ishmael. So he's got to be ready. And and Ron praised him for being ready and a guy that they feel like if need be, he, if pressed into action, he'd be able to come in and give us some quality snaps. They talked about Antonio Gibson and, you know, the, the, some of the, the strides he's taken since the start of the season. He said, hey, like to see him hold on to the football. Remember, I was nitpicking on the film last week 
about you know ball security and ball on the right side. He he's you can see right now he's not comfortable carrying the football in his left hand. He's he's a dominant right hand carry guy. And I I, I nitpicked last week when I said hey you, you want to be a little bit more dynamic as a runner switch that ball hand to the outside hand which is where the ball is supposed to be. So if it's poke free it ends up going out of bounds and not staying in bounds. And you're not exposing it to the defender that's coming towards you. Plus, it gives you a free arm to be able to stiff arm, maybe fight off. And he's a big, strong kid. So you'd like to see him fight off defenders with a stiff arm or be able to do something with that off arm. But he's carrying the football inside and it got poked free right before half. Again, it, it, it was the end of the half. It didn't matter. But it, again, you don't want that on tape. So Ron said, I'd like to see him hold on to the football, but he's done some really good things. You know, then he talked about Gandy Golden and said, hey, look, you know, he's starting to get more opportunities. We feel like he's getting comfortable and uh, we like what he's doing and how he's progressing. And, and so he looks like a guy that's going to do some good things. I like what I've seen from him in the bits and pieces that we've got from AGG out on the field. And then, you know, obviously he talked about Isaiah Wright and how they feel like they've gotten way more than they bargained for as an undrafted guy. You know, he makes the team, and now he's starting to really give them a little something. So uh, he talked about the rookies and how they're all contributing early on in this season. But then we got past all of the, you know, uh, talk about the, the injuries, and we got past the rookie talk. And they tried to, you know, weasel their way in, but eventually we were going to get to Dwayne. And he talked about Dwayne's play, and he talked about, how Dwayne did, in fact, stare down a couple of receivers. Remember, Dwayne said in his post-game presser, I didn't stare anybody down. You know, it's it just me trying to do too much. So he didn't, he took ownership for the mistakes. He said, look, I got to be better. I can't make those types of mistakes, put my team in that kind of a position. However, he refused to ante up on the fact that he was staring down receivers, which he was. Anybody watching with a TV copy could see. You don't need the film to tell you that he was staring down receivers. So uh, Ron obviously had a chance to watch. He said, no, no, he definitely stared down some receivers, took some defenders to the football. Um, that can't happen. He's got to be better ab about that. But, you know, we, he did some good things. And remember, I mentioned yesterday, Dwayne did some good things. The touchdown to um, both touchdown passes, as a matter of fact, to Dontrell Inman where were beauties now I thought the second one was a little late but he, he got it there because his arm is so strong he got it there and, and I found out why it was late today Ron in the presser said that Dwayne actually read his progressions backwards and he started on the wrong side of the field because remember I was giving Dwayne credit yesterday for looking off the safety he didn't do that intentionally he just was looking in the wrong spot initially and then he came backside to Dontrell and saw him open and then threw a laser shot to him for the touchdown but he was actually supposed to be working backside and progress to Dontrell faster because he was open way before Dwayne cut it loose and it just so happens he was still open and Dwayne was able to get it into that window but that's no here nor there that was a great throw the first touchdown of the game to Dontrell was a great throw um there was some good throw I told you the fourth and two the the extend 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 the pockets collapsing and he finds uh, Logan Thomas for the four, uh, fourth down conversion. It's a big play. You know, there were some really good throws in this game by Dwayne. Some really good decisions. And remember, early in the game, Dwayne was hot in that first possession when we scored the touchdown. Early in the game, Dwayne was playing good ball up until that first interception. He was making some good throws, making some good decisions. Uh, but then the, the interceptions came. And it kind of negated all of the good things that he had been doing and all of the goodwill he was building up in the game. So you, you see some of the good. But then the, the bad, when you throw three interceptions, and this is what Rivera pretty much said before I play you this clip. He pretty much said, look, you can't turn the football over. And remember, that was the crutch that I was leaning on with Dwayne. You say what you want about his play. Oh, this is the Alex Smith performance. Yada, yada. I don't care about any of that stuff. He's not hurting us with turnovers. And as long as he's given us a chance, I'm willing to ride this ship as long as I have to to figure out if this guy has it or not. All right, if I got to ride this thing for a year and a half, I'm cool with that as long as he's given us a chance to win. But Sunday, he didn't give us a chance to win. And I, those types of performances, you can't ride with those for, for too long, especially when you got guys in the locker room giving you a chance to win, which segues to what Ron had to say. I'm going to play you a clip from his presser today in which he was, for the first time, 
not non-committal on Dwayne, but he actually came out and said, look, we're not looking to lose games here. If we can win and Dwayne's not the answer, maybe we may have to look elsewhere. This is the first time we've heard anything of the sort from Ron since he named Dwayne the starter of this football team. Take a listen. Ron, I know you said Dwayne is your quarterback for the foreseeable future, but I look at that locker room and there's a bunch of competitive guys in there. Yep. If he continues to struggle or have you know poor performances, is it going to be harder and harder to sell Dwayne as your quarterback going forward because yep. in that locker room, guys want to win? Yes, they do. And, and, and again, there were a lot of guys that gave their heart, put their heart out on the field. And, 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 and truthfully, they deserve better. I mean, when, when you look at the way, you know, Deron played and, and Jonathan and, 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 and Montez, I mean, you know, guys like that are leaving it on the field. John Boston, I mean, you know, guys played hard. You know, then you turn around the offense side, you look at those guys on the offensive line were battling and fighting too. And, you know, the things that the backs did and the receivers and tight. I mean, you have to you know, say at some point there is. And, and I'll cross that bridge when I get there. You know when that bridge may be? Is there, is, there, um, is, there like, is there like a is there like a cut point? Like obviously you want there to is. Grow, there, you want to see there grow is. and progress, but is there going to be a time where you just got to, in a sense, maybe cut bait in a way? Yes, there is. I mean, again, and 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 and, and you brought up the point, and it's a very good point, is that there are guys in that locker room that are playing well enough for us to win, and again, we have to make sure everybody is playing well enough to win at that point, and there is there there is there is a a, a cutoff point for me. There is. You hear the names that he rattled off there? They really, really love Deron Payne. I swear. He played the highest amount of defensive snaps along the defensive line in his football game for the second consecutive week. They love Deron Payne, guys. I don't know how you feel about Deron Payne. You already know how I feel about Deron Payne. But they love Deron Payne uh, for whatever that's worth. But you heard what Ron just said. Look. We got a locker room full of guys that deserve better. That's the first time we've heard him be critical of Dwayne in that way. Dwayne wasn't good enough, and, and rightfully so. This is the first time I've been really critical of Dwayne in this way. This is the first time you've heard me say that for the— uh, I'm leaning towards Dwayne not being the guy. That's the first time you've ever heard me say that. I haven't said that before. But when you have games like this, you start to wonder, is this the right guy? And again, it's not just the interceptions. I have to reiterate this to you guys because mistakes are going to be made. I told you, Drew Brees, it took him three years before he figured it out. He had more interceptions than touchdown passes in a couple of those years early on. And there was one 20 interception season in there for Drew Brees. We, we know about Peyton Manning. I'm not comparing Dwayne Haskins to these future Hall of Famers. I mean, that's not what I'm trying to do, but what I'm giving you is context that – just because you start out throwing interceptions and it's a rough go of it doesn't mean you're going to end up being a horrible quarterback, you know. But the thing that I, I – with those guys, it was more or less decision-making and, and less on accuracy. With Dwayne, I, it's accuracy that scares me. I'm not seeing a guy that's putting the football where it needs to be down the field. In the short, the intermediate, Dwayne doesn't have a problem throwing a slant. You know, throwing a, a, a stop route, throwing a dig route over the middle of the football field, or throwing a shallow cross. You know, he seems to struggle with the flare route out of the backfield or, or the wheel route off the sideline, you know, but he struggles down the field. That's where his struggles really are. And it's hurting this offense because we can't get chunk plays unless it's Terry catching a five-yard pass and turning it into a 15-yard gain, or it's Terry catching a 9-yard pass and turning it into a 20-yard gain. That's the only way we get chunk plays. Outside of Terry run after catch, we got nothing. And that starts at the quarterback. We got to be a little bit better and more effective pushing the football down the field. And opportunities are being dialed up, and Dwayne simply isn't taking advantage of it. So I said all of that to say this. I'm not giving up on Dwayne Haskins. I watched all these teams around the league. I watched a lot of these young quarterbacks, and a lot of them are making the same mistakes. It's Some of it is youth. Those two interceptions where he stared down his targets, that's youth. That's inexperience. I can explain that away. What I can explain away is the miss to Terry McLaurin in the back of the end zone. Now, I saw other quarterbacks miss those same exact passes, but 
If you want to take that next step, you need to hit that pass. You know, the, the comeback on the outside to your receiver, I need you to hit that. I need you to stop throwing that five yards. Over, hell, Baker Mayfield was throwing that five yards over his receiver's head. Doesn't make it right, but other, all the other quarterbacks are doing the same exact thing. We just need him to be better. Period. End of discussion. And you cannot turn the football over. If you're going to be inaccurate and you're going to miss some throws, at least give us a chance. And if you can't do that, you're going to find yourself with a shorter leash than what you would be given if you're not turning it over. The fastest way for Dwayne to find the bench is to keep turning the football over. If he wants to continue to give himself a chance to prove that he is once and for all the guy, you got to take care of the rock. Because again, with the way we play defense, we're going to have a chance most weeks to win games. But if you turn it over, we can't afford to lose the turnover battle. We're not good enough. We, we talked about that before the season started. We talked about that after week one when we won the turnover battle. We talked about it again when we lost the turnover battle in week two. And we reiterated that heading into week three. This is a winnable game against an opponent that is equal to, maybe a little bit greater than us, but they're not, they're not light years ahead of us. We, they're a very beatable opponent on the road. And we had them on the ropes in the fourth quarter, right where we wanted them, and we let them off the hook with turnovers. Despite losing the turnover battle at that time, three to nothing at, at, at that point of the game. Three to nothing. Might have been four at that point. I'm trying to think. We had five turnovers. No, it was three to nothing heading into the fourth quarter. Two Dwayne interceptions and the fumble by Gibson. Despite losing the turnover battle three to nothing, we were ahead. And then we, we, we didn't, if three to nothing wasn't enough, we made it five to nothing. You can't overcome that. There's no coming back from that. So um, we'll talk more about this, but that's going to do it for the said- show. I thank you guys for joining me here on Washington Football Nightly. Remember, if you haven't already done so, what are you waiting on? Um, subscribe to the Louis T Network for more great content. Also, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Uh, I really do appreciate you guys, all the comments, even the ones I don't agree with. I love the participation. I read all of your comments in the comment section, even some of them that I just bat my eyes at or say, what is this person talking about? But nonetheless, I appreciate all of the conversation because you guys keep the conversation going in the comment section, and I appreciate that. So um, please continue to comment. Please continue to be active. Continue to support the Louis T Network. If you haven't become a patron, please do yourself a huge solid and become a patron so you can watch this film. This is a big week for film. You know, there are a lot of mistakes made. There are also some good plays made on both sides of the football. The secondary, I thought, was exceptional in this game. There weren't a lot of big plays. Kendall Fuller came back, and he had an impact. So I can't wait to really assess that defensive film and look at the secondary and some of the things they were doing on the back end because we really didn't get hurt through the passing game. Where we were hurt in this game was on the ground, up front. And uh, we'll take a look at that as well. So if you're not a patron, become one so you don't miss out on these film breakdowns. But uh, nonetheless, I'm going to glide to the side. There's a great Monday night game tonight. I don't want you to miss that. So I'll let you get back to your uh, regularly scheduled programming. Enjoy the football game tonight. We'll be live after that game, breaking it down here on the Louis T Network. So join me for that. But um, until then, I'll, we'll do this again tomorrow. I'm your man, Louis T. This has been Washington Football Nightly. You guys, have a good one. Take care. Here comes the diesel. Here comes the diesel. There's the snap, hand to Riggins. Good hole. He's got the first down to the 40. He's gone. The 35, the 30, the 40. He's gone. He's gone.